Hey, what's up guys? This is Coach Chase Wimberg, DFW Penguin Basketball, PenguinHoops.com. Guys, make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Um, I wanted to talk about this um, for a minute now, um, because a lot of people that I know, especially my, not my parents, but it's like friends that I know personally, they're, they're getting their kids into sports and they don't really understand the levels of youth basketball. You know, sometimes people think it's all bunched into one, but it's totally not. Um, it may be five levels, but I'm gonna talk about four. And the reason I'm doing this video, I talked to one of my parents, my parents, he told me that he actually watched the videos, sorry. He told me that he actually watches the videos, which I was surprised because nobody ever really says anything, but it means a lot. So I'm like, let me start making these videos again. So today I want to talk about what I think are the four levels of youth basketball. Um, so let's get right into it. So the first level, which is in my mind, the lowest level of youth basketball, and it could be, this mainly rages from kindergarten, up until about eighth or ninth grade, depending on um, where you're at. Um, in bigger towns, the the beginner stages um, are better because it's more kids in that pool. If you're in a very very small town, um, you know you probably only have one level. <laughs> you probably only have one level of sports or youth basketball, but it just varies. But I'm going to talk about my four. And the first one is the beginner stages. So the extreme beginner. So I mean like people, these are kids that play casually, play basketball casually, but don't probably don't want to play past the eighth grade, if that makes sense. They just kind of play, they don't have a desire to really get better. They just enjoy playing basketball. And these are actually people also that are mixed in there that want to get better, but they got to start somewhere. Or they just got um, the itch to play basketball, it could it could have happened in the fifth grade. They probably could have just started playing in the eighth grade um, or ninth grade. Sometimes people start off late and they just want to play for fun. They like watching it on TV and they just want to play for fun. Also, this is where kids start off that are going to be really, really good. They may have already been good. Let's say it's a kid and their father or mother played basketball in high school and college and they were pretty good. This kid has to start off a lot of times, if they're new to the town, they don't know anyone that has a basketball club, they start off on the beginning stages because they don't know anybody to contact. Even if their kid is advanced at that age, they don't know anybody to contact to get on a, I guess, a um, select team when they're that young. So it's really hard to find, if your kid is really talented, it's really hard to find a select club at that age group. Um, mainly because there aren't a lot of coaches that want to start there if they have a club. They don't want to start their kids that young. And a lot of times, if they do, if you look up and find a club, a basketball club for kids that are five to, to nine years old, um, it's more than likely a dad that has a kid that's good, that's coaching the team, and then he's trying, he's scrambling to find good players. So mainly in the casual and beginner stages, these are the leagues where kids don't know the rules, they double dribble a lot, they travel a lot, step out of bounds a lot. And if you've been around games like this, um, the violations are so bad from the players that the refs just stop calling the violations. Like if it's a third grade game and almost everyone on the team travels or dribb double dribbles every, every two or three dribbles, the ref is just gonna stop calling. And in a way that's good, but in a way that's bad. For the kids that are trying to get better, they're not gonna get better because they're gonna have a false sense of them traveling and it being okay. For the kids that need to get better, um, they're not learning the rules because they're being pacified by the referees because everyone on the floor is so unskilled. So if you're a kid that is watching this video, your parent that's watching this video, you wanna try to start off on the select side or on a really good rec team if you can. Um, or not even just a team that's good, but a team with a coach that's gonna hold them accountable for their mistakes and violations on the court at practice and in the games. So that's the number one level, the really, really low level where guys are traveling everywhere. It's an air ball fest, it's a turnover fest. Um, guys don't know the rules. 
and even to some of the coaches that are coaching these teams, since they're just trying to coach their son or their daughter, they don't know the rules either. So, yeah, if you if you're a parent and you're looking to get your kid um, to a certain point of being good at basketball, you want to try to either find a rec league coach that knows what they're doing, or try to find a youth coach or select coach that um, has more structure to teach your kid how to play at a younger age. Because the younger they are, the more they learn young, the better they're gonna be in the long run. Number two is the novice level. So this is basically high, high end or more skilled or better rec league teams and low end select teams. So this is like a weird, it's like a weird spot to be in, but this is where most of the kids that I've encountered, most of the kids that I've seen, this is where they end up playing all the way through. And these are the kids that end up you know, they may make, depending on what middle school they go to, they may make the A or B team at the middle school. They make the ninth grade team. And then after that, they either quit playing or um, they end up getting better and they go up the pipeline and they may either end up growing and getting some height on them, which projects them to make the JV team and varsity at some point. These guys that normally play um, and from the, the high-end rec league, to like low end select, these are the guys that either one or two, depending, um, they either go down a pipeline and they play on every single team that their school has until they're a senior. So this is what I mean, like a kid that makes the A team in middle school or B team in middle school, they make the B team or A team in ninth grade. Then they play on the second JV team. Then they play on the real JV team and then they play varsity their senior year if they're lucky. Um, it just depends. But this is where most kids are normally these days out here in the Dallas Fort Worth area that I've seen. This is what they do. This is a normal kid pad. Now this is a kid that may be on a select team, but the talent is not there. The height is not there. The speed is not there. The athletic ability is just not there enough for them to jump and leap over guys to where they're getting recruited um, by other like big time select teams or to the point where in the ninth grade they're getting busted over and playing JV games or they're on varsity by their sophomore year. So this is, for the most part, this is the normal kid phase or the normal kid uh, balance to where they play, but they're not, they could end up getting a whole lot better in the, in the long run, but most of these kids, they play and they're pretty good for their age group, but they don't have the athletic ability to take them over the top for them to be really, really, really good, right? For them to make varsity early, for them to play or start as a junior um, or play a lot of minutes as a junior or a sophomore on varsity. So this is the this is the normal kid phase. This is a, a slightly above average. These are what guys play. This is the these are the leagues that guys play in where they're they're decent for their age group, but they're not elite yet. And there's nothing wrong with that. Everyone has different goals on what they want, but um, it's nothing wrong for a kid to go down this type of pipeline. Um, but the, from what I've seen out here, this is the norm for guys, right? That actually want to play basketball and get a little bit better, but they just may may or may not. Either, it's either the school they go to where the competition level is a little bit higher or they just lack the height, speed, and natural athletic ability to take them to, for them to make varsity early, right? Or just the pool of players at their high school, their senior high, is really, really good and it's hard for them to crack that line to get over the hump to be on varsity as a junior or be on varsity as a sophomore or play on the JV, the first JV team with the juniors and stuff or the guys that are planning on going on varsity the next year. So that's number two, the novice, the novice player. All right, number three, guys, um, the third level of youth sports or youth basketball is the higher end, the higher select teams. So um, the high select teams are those teams that play in the select league and they have like three really good players and the rest are just basically those um, 
novice players on the team. So they're good enough to play in tournaments. They may even win tournaments every now and then, but when they play those super select teams, um, with those guys that are eighth grade and they got four, six, five kids on the team, and got kids that, that are nationally ranked and stuff like that, and those teams that are sponsored by shoe companies and stuff like that, they lose to those teams badly because they don't have the elite talent and the elite size to compete against those guys. But we'll talk about that group of kids later. But this is where most kids end up that they go down a pipeline um, of making varsity early or making varsity on time. Let's say that. Um, these are the guys that have athletic ability and they understand basketball mainly because they've been playing a lot, getting a lot of reps. They got probably have trainers um, the dad trains them as well, their mom trains them, an older brother, and they've been on the circuit and understand ball a lot more than other players. And they may have just a little bit more talent, but they're not extremely elite to where they're like ranked and they're going to be on varsity in the ninth grade and starting in the ninth grade on varsity or, and stuff of that nature. Um, but they're going to be pretty good fill-in players or they're going to be really good for their varsity team later on down the line. Um, but they're not players that are getting sought after um, by college coaches in the eighth, seventh, eighth, ninth grade and stuff. Those are not those guys. These are the guys that are um, slightly below the super elite of players, which is the, the real actual pipeline for guys that are going to be good at basketball. And these are guys that, um, you know, they may be in the eighth grade, but they're better than some of the JV guys, if that makes sense. Um, some of the lower end JV guys. I'm trying to, I'm trying to put it together for you guys so it can make more sense. But these are the guys that are going to be on seventh grade A team, eighth grade A team, ninth. Uh, they may, um, they may get bust over and be on the JV team in the ninth grade, or they start on on a ninth grade team and they're probably going to be on varsity next year as a sophomore. These are the type of guys that are slightly above. Um, all the rest of the novice guys, and they've been playing in the circuit, they have the skill level, and they have somewhat of the athletic ability and height and speed to play at a higher level. And these guys, this is kind of like, this is a good place to be as a player. Um, if you're in the 8th, ninth, 10th grade, um, your, 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 your skill level is at this level, and you're able to play. Now, some teams, like I have, I have teams that I've had in the past, and I have a team now, um, that's good enough. Like me, I'm really big on not going to tournaments unless I have a team that I feel is going to win or going to compete to win in the tournament. Otherwise, it's a waste of time. Um, but these are the guys that play on the circuit. They play three weekends out of the spring and summer in tournaments. And sometimes they go out and they win because the bracket is weak that weekend and they, and they beat a bunch of guys that aren't that good. They're playing against novice teams that are entering into the tournaments that, that aren't really that good. And that's another level too. Some of these novice teams, they just put themselves in tournaments just to play because they want to play. Um, but they're not really there yet. And these um, these higher level select teams, they play in them and stuff and they borrow guys every now and then so they can win from other teams and things of that nature. But um, these are the guys that go down the regular path of ninth grade, making a ninth grade team. They go JV and then their junior year, they're on varsity. So, this is where a lot of my higher end guys are. Um, I haven't had any guy that is above that yet, um, that ended up being bigger, bigger than that, but this is where all my really good guys are. Um, they're going down the path of making a ninth grade A team, making JV as a sophomore, then on their junior year, they're on varsity. So this is a very good, this is the real actual normal for a guy that is a good basketball player and is going to be a good basketball player at the level of varsity, if that makes sense. And now, the number four, this is the big one. This, the, the fourth level of youth sports is like the super elite um, players in your age group, in your class. And these are the guys that in the seventh grade they're already better than guys on varsity. These are the guys that um, have been getting recruited to play on teams and stuff since they were in the third grade. Mainly might be because of their size or their skill level or they have a father or something that's well known in the basketball community and they know that he's gonna be good and he's, he's being projected that way. Or these are the guys that 
or getting letters and stuff from colleges and and getting calls and stuff from colleges and stuff like that in the seventh or eighth grade. Um, or they're projected to be on varsity in the ninth grade or start um, in the ninth grade on their varsity team. These are the super elite kids. These are the kids that in the fourth grade, this kid was 5'10", and he can handle the ball like a guard. These type of guys. Or so the guy was a small guy, but he never missed shots when he was in the, in the fifth grade. Like, man, this kid is amazing. And they grow up the pipe, go up the pipeline, they start to get recruited. And these are the teams that you see that the super, the, the regular select teams that travel and play in tournaments that may win the, the lower grade that's, that's below them. Um, these are the kids that in the seventh grade, everyone's dunking. Um, <laughs> they got kids that are, are six, seven in the seventh grade, 200 pounds, dunking the ball in the post. They got guys that are guards that are six foot four, you know, in the seventh grade. And they always been a lot better than everyone else. Head and shoulders above everyone else. They're playing on teams that travel the country that are sponsored by shoe companies and things of that nature. This is the super elite athletes and they're, and they're in these uh, basketball clubs and AU clubs and it's a whole different ball game, right? And a lot of people, they watch stuff on the internet and they watch these clips on Instagram and they think that their kid needs to be there and everybody is not going to be there. That's not a healthy environment for every kid. Some kids thrive playing on that tier under that, right? Um, and me personally, I would rather, unless I'm playing on a team, an AAU team where my kid is going to play a lot of minutes, he's going to get a lot of exposure, he's going to learn a lot as well. If I had a son, I wouldn't want to put my kid in that environment until they're at least on JV. Like, um, a lot of people are trying to get their kids to that point in the sixth grade, and it's not really worth it yet. You know, they still need to be developed and learn stuff. Like, if your kid is not on varsity, your kid is not even on the, the top JV team in school, I honestly don't think you need to be on a travel team, especially some big-time sponsor team. Because I think, I, I think that it's good to play a lot of games, but if your kid is not on JV or varsity, he's not going to be seen by any of these college coaches because they're not playing 17 and under. Like, I think that if your kid is really, 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 really good and they're playing 17 and under after their eighth grade year, after their ninth grade year on some of one of these big time clubs, it makes sense because there's been going to be seen by college coaches during the open period. But other than that, it's not necessary. It's not bad if you do it, but it's not really necessary until your kid at least, listen to me guys, until your kid is at least on JV1 playing. Right? Um, if you're on varsity in the ninth grade, yeah, you need to be playing 17 and under on the circuit and being seen. You're in the 10th grade, you on varsity, that spring and summer, yes, you need to be on the varsity, I mean on a 17 and under team. But if your kid is in the eighth grade and he's playing 15 and under in the summer on some big time travel circuit and that coach is not really actually teaching them, he's just trying to win games, to me, it's a waste of time. I feel like that kid needs to play games, but also needs to be taught how to play instead of just going to these tournaments to get wins. But anyway, those are my four levels. The beginner, the novice, the higher end select, and then the super elite guys. I'm Coach Tex Rimmer, DFW Penguin Basketball. Like, comment, subscribe, share this with someone that has a kid that plays basketball, and I'll see you guys later.